Hello everyone, here in this lecture I am going to talk about the management of pregnancy in Rh negative mother. So before you watch this video, please go through with the previous uh, four parts of this topic. Uh, there I have discussed with the basic concept of Rh incompatibility, aluminity and the investigation or the tests that are being carried out in the mother. So you might be able to clear with this topic and the link of this all given in the description box below. And here in this lecture, we'll discuss about its management part. So please watch till end so you might be able to clear with the basic concept of this whole topic. So here we'll discuss how we can manage the woman who is Rh negative. So this all depends on whether she is sensitized or not. It means uh, whether she forms certain antibodies against the fetal Rh antigen or not. If it is not, then it is very good. And suppose if she had formed antibodies, then how much antibodies are being formed and how badly or how severely the fetus get affected with this all antibodies. So depending on all these things, the management goes on. So once we came to know that the woman is Rh negative, then we must collect the blood group of father as well to detect what is the blood typing and grouping of the father is also. Because if both are negative, then it is a compatible matting. There the fetuses will be 100% negative. So there will no more be incompatibility and the fetus remain uh, normal and no intervention is usually needed. But suppose if the father is Rh positive, then whether he is homozygous or heterozygous, this will depend that how we can manage the woman accordingly because the fetus may be positive or may be negative. So the father blood group or typing is equally important in the management of women. Now the important second step is that uh, uh, we must collect the deep history of women, whether she had previous mismatch blood transfusion or she had previous history of abortion, any ectopic, any stillborn or the history of fetus or newborn who is badly affected by the hemolytic diseases. So the history of all these things gives a basic idea for the line of management that we can plan. Okay. So as we came to know that the woman is negative and the father is positive and the woman who is first time pregnant who didn't had any history of mismatch blood transfusion in such women we can perform ICT indirect comb test at 12 week now suppose if it is negative negative means the woman didn't form any antibodies uh, till now okay and we will repeat this ICT at 28 weeks again and if it shows negative again then we will administer the prophylactic management to the woman that is uh, the routine administration of antenatal anti-D prophylaxis that is immunoglobin anti-D immunoglobin and we will give full dose of anti-D that is 300 microgram intramuscularly to the mother. So at 28 week we will administer this prophylaxis treatment to mother because all together this whole dose covers the rest of the 12 weeks uh, from 28 to 40 week of gestation if fetal maternal bleeding happens then it this dose covered this all uh, bleeding and along with that the majority of loss uh, the bleeding the bleeding that could be happened in third trimester that can be covered by this dose. So that's why we are administering at 28 week around 300 microgram intramuscularly to the mother. So this is the prophylaxis treatment because we are, we, we just inhibit the interaction between the fetal antigen and the mother antibodies. So what this drug does, it create a reaction or it create a interaction between the fetal Rh antigen if it happens. Suppose if the fetal maternal bleeding happens, this antibody that we are administering to the mother, they bind to these fetal RBCs and they destroyed in the mother's spleen. Okay, so 
before the women's immune system mounts and they form certain antibodies against these rbcs this antibody that we are administering they beforehand bind to these rbcs and they kill them and they destroy them so they won't be able to mount mother's immune response who forms antibody against the fetal rbc so this is the action of uh, anti d prophylaxis now after this we will allow the pregnancy to be continued till term okay and uh, in between also we can check the uh, ict two weekly or monthly but once the fetus deliver out uh, we can directly check the blood group of fetus uh, because we have the cord through which we can take the sample of fetal blood and in that we can also check the direct comb test so direct comb test indicates the presence of antibodies of mother if there okay suppose if any fetal maternal bleeding happens and the mother forms certain antibodies that can be uh, crosses the placenta and it can be in the fetal blood so direct comb test allow us to find out the antibodies of mother that can crosses the placenta and it can be easily detectable okay so suppose at the time of delivery if the uh, rh positive fetus is there and direct comb test is negative it means the fetus don't have any maternal antibodies the igg antibodies in such condition when the both things are present the rh positive fetus and the direct comb test dct is negative in such condition we will give the another prophylaxis uh, medication to the woman okay because this is the sensitive sensitizing event as we discussed previously that uh, if any sensitizing events is there so this is the sensitizing event where the delivery taken place by vaginal mean or by cesarean section because this extra dose will cover the feto maternal bleeding that will appearing right away okay so once the del delivery took place and uh, if dct is negative fetus is positive in such condition we will give again full dose of 300 microgram intramuscularly uh, the anti d uh, medication that is immunoglobulin intramuscularly to the woman and uh, this will provide the protection against the fetal maternal bleeding that will happen okay so again surely the blood will go in the maternal circulation but this antibody will uh, form cover over these rbcs the fetal rbcs and destroy them and take away in the women's spleen okay so again the women's immune system will not mount and will not form any antibodies against the fetal rbc so that's why we are giving this postnatal uh, prophylaxis to the mother within 72 hours of delivery but suppose if we mistakenly forgot to administer this Uh, postnatal prophylaxis to women within 72 hours then also we can ad administer it within 28 days after delivery because it provide some level of protection but suppose if before 12 week of gestation if any uh, things happen like abortion or any molar pregnancy is detected or any ectopic pregnancy is there in such condition we will not give the uh, full dose of anti d we can only administer 50 microgram that's enough but suppose uh, if anything happens beyond 12 week then the full dose is required so all together this will depend on how much fetal maternal bleeding happens so that much bleeding will be covered by this anti d dose so the test which is being carried out to detect how much uh, fetal maternal bleeding is happened is the clehor batke test we can perform that test and identify or quantify the amount of fetal maternal bleeding so it is considered that if the 1 ml of fetal maternal bleeding happens then 10 microgram anti d dose is sufficient okay so 300 microgram dose of anti d gives protection against 30 ml of whole fetal blood or it is equal to 15 ml of fetal rbcs and this 300 microgram is equal to 1500 international unit but suppose if the fetal maternal bleeding is more 
then by KB test we can measure, we, we can quantify the amount, how much the bleeding happens and according to this KB test results, we can quantify and we can administer the dose to the mother. So thereby we can manage the non-sensitized primary gravid woman and in same manner if the woman is multigravid and uh, she is not sensitized yet by the previous pregnancies as well uh, as she received the uh, anti D injections. So in such condition we will perform uh, or we will manage the same as we will do in primary gravid women. We will perform ICTs if remain negative we will keep on checking the ICT and still negative then we can give the anti D prophylaxis in antenatal period routinely at 28 week and still remain negative then at the time of delivery also we will give the full dose of anti D. So thereby all non immunized all non sensitized women are being managed by administering the anti D prophylaxis to the mother. But suppose if the father is positive and the woman had the history of previous mismatched blood transfusion or she had the history of abortion, stillborn babies or the babies affected with the hemolytic diseases. In such condition, we are sure that the woman is ICT positive. Okay? There are antibodies that already being formed and now we will check the antibody titer. How much antibodies are there in such women? So if the antibody titer remain less than 1 is to 16, the ICT titer, the antibody, uh, the IgG antibodies that are being made in women's body, if it remain less than 1 is to 16 ratio, then it is not that much critical. So we can check this titer two weekly to monitor that whether it goes up or still it remains same. If it still remains same, it's not going up then in such condition we will allow the pregnancy to continue till term but we will monitor it very keenly very closely and then we can terminate the pregnancy once it reaches 34 week of gestation so thereby we can uh, terminate the pregnancy by vaginal mean or cesarean mean according to women's obstetrical condition but suppose if the titer, the ICT titer goes up, that is more than 1 is to 16, it reaches critical titer. It means it indicates that uh, yes, the woman may uh, show soon or later the features of hydro fetalis in ultrasonography. In such condition where the titer goes up, 1 is to 16, this is the critical titer where the surely the fetus will have severe hemolytic diseases. In such condition, we can check the bilirubin status of the fetus. So it can be done by amniocentesis and the bilirubin count and the destructions of RBC can be plotted in Lily's graph that all we discussed previously. So amniocentesis we can perform or either if we don't want to go in invasive method, then we can go with the MCA Doppler, middle cerebral artery Doppler, where the blood flow toward the brain increases. Uh, to combat the loss okay so as the blood supply toward the vital organ increases that can be seen in the mc doppler so if the mc doppler shows 1.5 mom the multiple of median values or more than that it indicates that the fetus is badly affected it is severely affected the rbcs get destructed very severely so if we found that value then we will go with the chordocentesis. If the week of gestation is less than 34 week, then we will uh, manage the pregnancy by blood transfusion. So for that, we required expert skilled neonatologists with full uh, facility of intensive care units. Okay, uh, there we can uh, perform certain invasive procedures that uh, allow the fetus to be mature till term okay at least by 34 weeks so if the value of mca is more than 1.5 mom then we will perform chordocentesis that is we are taking the sample of blood from the cord okay so this is a fetal blood 
So we are taking the sample of blood of the fetus and we can check importantly the fetal blood group uh, that is the positive fetus we will found and the direct comb test we can check that uh, through which we can identify how much antibodies are uh, there in the fetal circulation and thirdly we can check the hematocrit value that is it is less than 30 percent. So this all we can easily find out by chordocentesis and we can come on conclusion that the fetus is badly affected and it needs transfusion. So as in adults the blood is transfused in same manner the fetus also requires the blood transfusion for the RBCs that are being destroyed. Okay, so to combat that loss the fetus requires blood transfusion and for that uh, by the use of chordocentesis uh, with the ultrasound guidance we can transfuse the blood intravascularly okay so in umbilical vessel the vein we can transfuse the blood and the blood which we are transfusing should be o negative okay so it should be o negative that we can transfuse very easily because o negative don't have any uh, antigens that form certain antibodies so blood transfusion can be done intravascularly or it can be in intraperitoneal where we can transfuse the blood in peritoneal cavity. So whatever the facilities or the trained person is available according to them, we can transfuse the blood to the baby. So uh, what actually this blood transfusion does, it uh, combat the loss. Okay. So whatever the blood is being lost, the RBCs are being lost it is replacing this loss so it is not like that that uh, once you have given the blood transfusion that's all enough no it is the uh, follow-up procedure where you required two weekly or monthly uh, transfusion because whatever you transfuse to the uh, fetus it is not permanent okay again new RBCs will come again they will enter in the mother's body and they form antibodies and that will destroy these fetal RBCs. So this is the follow up procedure that is chordocentesis or the blood transfusion that we must give to the fetus at regularly two week interval until the pregnancy reaches till term or nearby 34 weeks because uh, after that once the pregnancy reaches 34 weeks thereby we can uh, allow the pregnancy to terminate by any of the mean. So the motive behind this blood transfusion and the chordocentesis procedure is to continue the pregnancy until the fetus become mature. Okay, once the fetus get mature, then we can terminate the pregnancy. Okay, but yes, uh, if the fetus is badly affected, then this requires the chordocentesis and the blood transfusion is the procedure that requires regularly. Okay, but suppose. Uh, if the MCA Doppler shows the value of 1.5 mom uh, or more than that and the pregnancy is already 34 week of gestation or it is more than that, it is already crosses, then in such condition we can terminate the pregnancy and we can manage the fetus or the newborn accordingly. If the fetus requires uh, blood transfusion, then uh, in newborn babies we can transfuse, but we can uh, go with the delivery process okay we can terminate the pregnancy and allow the fetus to come out okay then after we can manage uh, the baby in intensive care units or if required the blood transfusion could be given to the newborn so the management in Irish negative mother is all depend on whether she is sensitized or if she is then how much antibodies she form and uh, according to these all antibodies how badly the fetus get affected so according to them we have discussed with the uh, management in non-sensitized women and the woman who is already being sensitized thank you